Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Do Viruses Trick Their Hosts Into Feeding Them? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature Communications, published on November 5th, 2022. Research conducted by Emra Altindis, C. Ronald Kahn, and others from the Boston College Biology Department and the Section of Integrative Physiology and Metabolism at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center at Harvard Medical School. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Scientists estimate that mammals can be infected with more than 300,000 virus species. All organisms need energy, but simple microorganisms like viruses cannot produce their own energy. Instead, viruses survive by redirecting energy from a host organism to their own benefit. Normally, viruses survive by infecting cells and forcing them to produce more viruses. However, we have discovered a new class of viruses that redirect energy in a unique and fascinating way. These viruses are able to trick their host organism by producing their own version of insulin, called viral insulin. This viral insulin is like a wolf in sheep's clothing because the host organism cannot tell the difference between its own insulin and the viral insulin. Introduction A molecule called glucose acts as the power source for our bodies similar to how gasoline fuels a car. Eating food gives us energy because many foods contain glucose. After you eat a meal, the glucose from your food travels through the bloodstream to reach your cells. Glucose needs the help of a protein called insulin, which unlocks our cells and lets the glucose inside. Once the glucose makes it into our cells, it is broken down to release the energy that we use to move, grow, and survive. Just like our cells, viruses need glucose to survive. Normally, viruses infect one cell at a time and slowly steal energy and other resources. We wondered if there were any viruses out there that got their energy differently. Here is a virus seen under an electronic microscope. The virus can be seen as bright green neon spheres on a black background. Methods. To find out, we used a database with information about viral proteins. We ran a computer simulation to identify any viral proteins that appear similar to human insulin. Once we found some, we needed to test them and see how they acted compared to human insulin. 1. We used chemistry techniques to make the viral insulin proteins in our laboratory. 2. We prepared three groups of laboratory mice to perform the test. First group, we injected them with viral insulin. This was our intervention group. Second group, we injected them with regular insulin. This was our positive control group. And the third group, we injected them with saline, a salt water solution. This was our negative control group. And number three, over the next two hours, we measured how much glucose the mice had in their blood. The more glucose the cells had absorbed, the less glucose remained in the blood. This showed how strong the insulin was. Results. Our computer simulation showed that half of the viral insulin structure was almost the same as human insulin. Our lab experiment showed that human insulin was stronger than viral insulin. The amount of glucose in the mice's blood decreased much more with human insulin over the first 90 minutes. During testing, we also noticed viral insulin blocking an important marker of cancer. A marker of cancer is any molecule found in very high amounts in people with cancer. Here in figure one, you can see the change in blood glucose over time for mice injected with human insulin, viral insulin, or saline. 
On the x-axis of the graph, you can see the time after injection, which is indicated by an arrow at zero minutes. On the y-axis, you can see the blood glucose as a change from baseline, where 100% is the starting level of the blood glucose. You can see the results for saline in the black dashed line, viral insulin in orange, and human insulin in purple. Looking at the graph, which injection caused the largest decrease in blood glucose after 30 minutes? Why do you think all three of the groups showed a decrease, even though saline doesn't help glucose enter cells? Discussion. Because the viral insulin shares 30 to 50% of its structure with human insulin, it is able to force the host cells to absorb glucose. In biology, structure determines function. It makes sense that human insulin is stronger than viral insulin because human cells have evolved to recognize human insulin. The similarity of viral insulin is enough to make cells absorb some glucose, but not as much as human insulin. This means that the host will deliver glucose directly to the viruses. When viruses have access to all of this glucose energy, they can reproduce more quickly. This means that infections might begin to make the host organism very sick. Scientists are still trying to understand the function of viral insulins during the disease. Luckily for you and me, this particular class of virus can only infect fish, reptiles, and bugs, not humans. We were excited to find that viral insulin blocks a marker of cancer. This marker is called insulin-like growth factor 1 receptor, or IGF-1R. In cancer, IGF-1R causes dangerously fast cell growth. This rapid growth is one of the several factors that cause tumors in cancer patients. Our discovery that viral insulin blocks IGF-1R means that viral insulin might one day be used as a medicine for treating cancer in humans. Conclusion We discovered a new strategy that viruses use to trick their hosts. It is useful to understand the microorganisms that surround us, especially the ones that cause disease. If we can learn how viruses work, we can learn how to treat the illnesses that they cause. Think about the COVID-19 pandemic. How important was it for scientists to understand the SARS-CoV-2 virus? That was a huge help in developing vaccines against it. Getting vaccinated is an important way you can protect yourself against diseases caused by viruses and other germs. Do you have all of your shots? Some vaccines, like the flu shot, work best only when most of the people around you had them. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.